Hey there, Smarty fans, especially parents and educators. We've got something special for you, and it's not just another exciting episode of Who Smarted. It's a chance for you to help shape the future of our show. We're on a mission to make Who Smarted even better for both our brilliant young listeners and their amazing parents and educators. That's why we're inviting you to participate in our exclusive first ever Who Smarted survey to let us know what's working and where we can improve. So, parents and educators, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, cozy up, and take a few minutes to fill out our survey. Head over to whosmarted.com and click survey. Together, let's make Who Smarted the best it can be. Thanks for being an awesome part of our smarting community. And remember, the survey is at whosmarted.com. Just click survey. Hey, Smarty Pants, as you can hear, I'm on the bus. Next stop, Bridge Street. I've only got a few more stops, but I sure am hungry. Wait, what's this under my seat? Why, it's a bologna sandwich just sitting there. Should I eat it? I am pretty hungry. What do you think? Um... Hopefully you said no. After all, there's no telling where this sandwich came from, how it got there, or how long it's been lying around. Yuck! Oh, it's my stop. But I sure am hungry. Hey, what about the berries on this bush? I could eat these, right? I don't know if you should eat those, Sonny. That man over there just tried some. I feel sick. Yikes, guess not. The birds seem to like them, but they're definitely not people food. You okay, pal? I'm fine. Throughout human history, people have determined what to eat. Yum. And what not to eat. Through a process called trial and error. Uh, I think it was an error to eat those berries. That led to learned behavior. Knowledge passed down by our ancestors. As well as natural born instincts. My instincts tell me those berries are bad. Of course, it's best to heed your instincts before putting something potentially dangerous in your mouth. But what about the earliest humans? How did they figure out what was safe to eat? And how have we figured out not only what's safe, but what's delicious? Yum. And who's working now to determine what's healthiest and tastiest? Nom, 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 nom. It's time for another whiff of science on... Who smarted? Who's smarted? Who's smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science or history? Listen up, everyone. We make smarting lots of fun. But who's smarted? Feeling any better, pal? Much. I could go for a chili dog. Are you sure that's what you want after? <laughs> oh. Despite all the information at our fingertips today, not everyone is great at making smart food choices. But imagine how difficult that must have been for the first humans on the planet. Find berries, eat berries. I don't think you should eat <laughs> those. <laughs> When new animals, plants, or fungi were discovered by early humans, they couldn't consult the internet or even their ancestors. So the only way to find out if something was edible was to try it. Here goes everything. If that person became violently ill or died, <gasps> that food would be considered unsafe and avoided in the future. But if it was okay, hey, me no die, it would be considered edible. Of course, not everything that's bad for you will kill you. No eat. No eat. Early hunter-gatherer communities generally stayed in the same region over many generations, so information was passed down from the elders. New generations would learn what to gather, how to hunt different animals, and then refine methods for storing and cooking their meals as the community as a whole gained experience. Uh. Antelope sausage? Bean? Vegetable? Invent chili dog. Eat chili dog. Trial and error may not seem like the cleverest way to decide the fate of a species, but this method has been applied by every species on Earth, from the earliest bacteria to mammals alive today. All living things must convert fuel into energy. When an organism consumes something, 
And that something doesn't kill them. That organism will pass on traits to its offspring that provide an instinctual attraction to that food source. It's part of the evolutionary process of natural selection. Smarter, more evolved humans recognize that consuming smaller portions of unknown berries, leaves, mushrooms, insects, or animals would give them clues about the effects those foods might have on them without the effects being so drastic, harsh, or deadly. Bad berries. Many taste tests are one way we still experiment today to find out what you're allergic to, what upsets your stomach, or which flavors you prefer. Like when you sample all the ice cream flavors. Can I try the banana fudge pie, bubblegum mint chip, and chocolate snozberry? Smarty Pants, are you allergic to any foods? Call them out. I heard peanuts. Lots of people have strong peanut allergies. Lactose? Gluten? Soy? Yep, even though a food may be perfectly safe for some people, it might not agree with your individual body chemistry. In some cases, you may have an intolerance to a food where consuming it will make you feel icky and cause digestive issues. Or you may have a full-blown food allergy, which causes an immune response triggering all kinds of symptoms, some even life-threatening. In either case, you'll want to see an allergist, which is a doctor who treats allergies, who will expose you to tiny doses of that food in a controlled medical testing environment in order to determine your allergic reactions, triggers, and treatments. During a time known as the Neolithic Revolution, about 12,000 years ago, humans began to favor more permanent settlements, leaving behind the hunter-gatherer lifestyle in favor of farming and raising livestock. Now we can grow foods that are safe. And tasty, like chili dogs. When long-distance trade was established in the Middle East around 3000 BC or 5000 years ago, one thing in high demand was spices. Blech, this has no taste. Have you tried salt? <laughs> Yum. People began sharing ingredients and information about their own food discoveries. A lot of early trade involved spices, which were considered luxury items. Things like cinnamon, turmeric, cardamom, and ginger. But one spice reigned supreme and was traded, used as currency, incorporated into religious practices, and used to season and preserve food. Can you guess the name of this wonder spice? Why, it's salt. As time progressed and trade and travel became more prevalent worldwide, the sharing of spices, foods, recipes, and cooking techniques also became more widespread. Now that I've created the chili cheese dog, I will travel far and wide to spread the news and trade it for other delicacies from foreign lands. The more people traveled, the more foods were shared and enjoyed by people around the world. And just like a mom trying to get their kid to taste something new. Try it. You might like it. Trying new things is how you find out what you like. Uh. In fact, food tasting has played an important role throughout history. For example, throughout the centuries, important political figures like kings and queens were in constant danger of being poisoned by assassins. (gasps) Thus, the dangerous profession of official food taster was born. It was the job of the food taster to taste the king or queen's food and drink to make sure it was safe to eat. Uh. One of the first known food tasters was Halotus, employed by Emperor Claudius of Rome. Since then, food tasters have worked for kings and queens, czars and generals, even U.S. presidents. Some food tasters chose their line of work voluntarily, while others were forced into doing it. Uh. Some lived long lives, while others were not so lucky. Today, being a food taster is far less dangerous. Tasters are regularly employed by food companies like Campbell's Soup or the Mars Wrigley Candy Company to taste perfectly safe foods and evaluate their quality and flavor and share feedback. Or you could be a food critic someone who visits restaurants and writes about the food. Needs salt. Two stars. 
Ironically, many foods that are considered fancy and are quite expensive now used to be considered common and cheap, like lobster. What the heck is that thing? Looks pointy. Throw it back. Early European settlers to North America found lobsters so abundant they simply gathered them up as they washed ashore. But looking at a lobster, who'd think to eat one? I'm starving. I wonder if I could eat this thing. Ow! It pinched me. I know. Let's try baking it over hot rocks, then cracking open its claw. Ooh, good idea. Lobsters were dirt cheap to purchase and fed to servants and prisoners. It wasn't until they came into favor with wealthy connoisseurs in New York and Boston that they became recognized as a superior food. Then, when the railroads helped make East Coast lobsters available across America, demand grew and so did the price. Some other food you might think of as weird or gross have similar backstories. Things like oysters, frog legs. Tastes like chicken. And snails, also known as escargot, were discovered by trial and error. On the other hand, some foods that are mostly safe can be poisonous when not gathered, prepared, or consumed carefully. Can you think of something you find in a forest or even around your neighborhood that you can pick out of the ground that's perfectly healthy for you in some cases and in others, deadly? The answer after this quick break. Hey, Smarties, trusty narrator here. I had a unique challenge recently. I needed to learn German for a friend's wedding in just a few weeks. That's when I found Babbel. Thanks to Babbel, I'm well on my way to holding my own in German conversations and just in time for the wedding. Babbel makes learning a new language engaging and practical. It's not just about words. It's about real conversations that you can actually use. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash smarted. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash smarted. It's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash smarted. Rules and restrictions may apply. Join me on this language learning journey with Babbel. Auf Wiedersehen and let's embrace new conversations together. Hello, smarty listeners. Trusty here, home after a long day of smarting and boy, am I hungry. The question is, what to cook? Do I make crispy chicken parmesan? Or yummy salsa verde enchiladas? Or mouth-watering chicken sausage spaghetti bolognese? Now, I know what you're thinking. Trusty, how can you possibly cook such amazing, delicious, restaurant-worthy meals after a long day? It's easy. Just say hello to HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, and it is literally the best thing ever. Each week, I choose from over 45 scrumptious chef-crafted recipes online. Then, when my box arrives, I have everything I need for easy-to-make, hearty, healthy, delicious meals that I just know you and your family will love. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, HelloFresh wants to give you free breakfast for life. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash SmartedFree and use code SmartedFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash SmartedFree with code SmartedFree. Now back to who's smarted. So what's a food that's perfectly healthy in some cases and totally deadly in others? Did you say... Mushrooms? Great job if you did. Fun fact, there are 14,000 species of mushroom. Whoa. And of these mushrooms, about 70 to 80 species are very poisonous or even fatal if eaten. Just imagine the trial and error to figure that out. Don't eat. Don't eat. But while mushrooms have some species that are edible and some that are poisonous, some foods are both edible and poisonous if not prepared correctly. Huh? For example, elderberries can be a delicious, natural immune booster. But eating the plant's leaves, stems, or seeds can prove fatal. Rhubarb, as in rhubarb pie, has delicious stems. Yum. But the leaves contain oxalic acid, which can make you severely ill. (laughs) Many cultures have delicacies that, if not prepared with precision, can be harmful or fatal. 
This includes shark meat in Iceland, live baby octopus in Korea, Jamaican ackee fruit, which is poisonous unless fully ripe, and the Japanese fugu, or pufferfish, that, if improperly prepared, can release tetrodotoxin, a neurotoxin 1,200 times more deadly than cyanide. <gasps> and yet, someone decided to try each of these. Wish me luck! Today, we have many resources to tell us what is and isn't safe. That includes lots of professionals in various food-related fields. Food scientists study the physical, biological, and chemical makeup of food. They also apply food science to selecting, cultivating, preserving, processing, and distributing food safely and sustainably, while also working to create delicious recipes. Some modern food scientists are creating vegetable-based meals that have the taste and texture of meat without the cow. Nutritionists and dietitians study which foods are the most beneficial to your overall health and how to manage your diet to most efficiently absorb and utilize all the nutrients that sustain and give you energy. Food historians work with researchers in fields like archaeology, paleontology, and anthropology to track the developmental timeline and cultural significance of different diets throughout history and different cultural cuisines. Chefs worldwide share information and inspiration, creating dishes, curating menus, and trying to innovate the most interesting and most delicious meals imaginable. Uh, I say, just put stuff in your mouth. While that may sound a little crazy, most food discoveries of today came from the dangerous trial and error tastes of yesterday. Luckily, you don't have to do that. And if you do come across something new or interesting, be smart, use your instincts, and ask an adult before you try it. <laughs> oh no, did you eat something bad for you? No, I left my bologna sandwich on the bus. A special shout out to Caden and Stefan in El Cerrito, California. Thanks for listening to Who Smarted. This episode, Food Discoveries, was written by Libby Ward and voiced by Jenna Hoban, Sheffield Chastain, Adam Tex Davis, Kim Davis, Gia Davis, and Jerry Colbert. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Cheesewiz Suarez, with lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production. Who Smarted? Hey there, Smarty fans, especially parents and educators. We've got something special for you, and it's not just another exciting episode of Who Smarted. It's a chance for you to help shape the future of our show. We're on a mission to make Who Smarted even better for both our brilliant young listeners and their amazing parents and educators. That's why we're inviting you to participate in our exclusive first ever Who Smarted survey to let us know what's working and where we can improve. So, parents and educators, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, cozy up, and take a few minutes to fill out our survey. Head over to whosmarted.com and click Survey. Together, let's make Who Smarted the best it can be. Thanks for being an awesome part of our smarting community. And remember, the survey is at whosmarted.com. Just click Survey.